Mario Ficella, Here. Creston Liefried, Here. Ken Lawson, Natasha Bastian, Rainier Diaz de la Portilla, Here. Latasha Green Cobb, Present. and Barney Smith. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we get into the approval of the minutes, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the uh, people with uh, Gorman and Company, Wendover Housing Partners, and Vestor for the tour that we uh, received yesterday. Uh, some very beautiful properties and uh, excellent uh, representation of the housing that Florida Housing uh, uh, helps finance. So with that, thank you uh, for all that uh, were involved. And okay, are there any elected officials from any of the cities or Monroe County? If you would, please stand and be recognized. Thank, thank you for what you do. You. Okay, uh, you should have been provided the minutes of August 2nd meeting previously. Do I hear a motion to approve those? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? All right, we have a motion and a second. Are there any discussion about those minutes? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. All right, now we're moving to a staff update. Trey? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I did want to um, call to everyone's attention the uh, consent calendar. I received one request to remove an item from the consent, ag uh, the consent agenda and that is special assets item E, as in echo, and I have not heard from any other board members and wanted to uh, give them the opportunity now. Okay, yep. so with that, uh, Mr. Chairman requests that uh, special assets item E be removed from consideration from the consent agenda. Okay, we have a request, so I have a motion to pull that up. Don't yeah, need a motion for it? Yeah. Okay. No. Is there anybody opposed to it? <laughs> no. yeah. It's pulled. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now we'll, we'll move on to Florida Housing staff update. Um, with the departure of Jesse Leon, we've moved to reorganize the multifamily unit. I'm very happy to announce that uh, to the board that Marissa Button is the new director of the multifamily unit. I'm excited for them and for Florida Housing, and I wanted to uh, ask you to please join me in congratulating Marissa. <laughs> The next announcement is, is not as joyful or as good a news, at least not for us or for Florida Housing. Uh, after 18 years as policy director, Nancy Muller is departing Florida Housing at the end of this month. Uh, I've worked with Nancy for many, many years, uh, back when I was in previous work as a housing advocate as well. Um, Nancy's been an invaluable uh, resource for Florida Housing, and we will miss her institutional knowledge and steady leadership and wanted to recognize Nancy uh, for all of her years of service here at Florida Housing and wish her well. Come on. And, and Nancy, we, we, we do have a plaque for you to, to hang um, to hang in your home. Uh, it says, in sincere appreciation of Nancy Muller in recognition of her service as policy director for Florida Housing Finance Corporation from 2001 to 2019. The Board of Directors and staff at Florida Housing Finance Corporation recognizes your more than 18 years of dedicated service. Your wisdom, wit, and sense of humor have been an incredible incredible gift to your colleagues and a key component to the success of our team. The excellent work you have done has left an unforgettable mark on Florida Housing for your leadership and commitment and so much more we sincerely thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Sitting enjoying your 
days off. This is a little mug just to remember me by. I know you probably wish you had it before now. And you could have a drink in, but it says, today is a good day. So thank you. Thank you. Well, we got one more. One more. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Alder, with first on housing, formerly with Florida Housing, and and, uh, and, and Trey and Ray and members of the board. Appreciate y'all letting me speak this morning. I asked. Uh, you know, there's been been seven executive directors at Florida Housing. Nancy's worked for for four of us. Um, Nancy started her service. Governor Martinez's Office of Policy and Budget, um, and then was a project of FSU, and then Department of Community Affairs, and then Florida Housing in 2001. It's sitting there, her last board meeting was here, because her, the way she got to Florida Housing was working on a project with then DCA Secretary Steve Seibert, who she was working for at the time, and Mark Kaplan, the Executive Director of Florida Housing, and and there was, uh, Governor Bush had some initiatives around the Keys, and, and uh, and Mark thought, I need that lady to come, you know, more policy unit at Florida Housing. And and, uh, and here she was. So she came over, and I was, got, she got stuck with me as a staff member at that time, um, not by choice. Um, but uh, but what's, what's, uh, what's unique about Florida Housing, and, and uh, you know, is its flexibility. You know, and, and thanks to Executive Director Number Two, who's sitting right here. Um, <laughs> Florida housing is uniquely structured, you know, unlike a lot of state agencies, which gives the flexibility to solve problems, move quicker than your average agency, that sort of thing. You know, in, in order to do that well, of course, you need, you know, there needs to be some, some thoughts, some principles that, that keep you grounded when you've got a lot of flexibility. And, and for me, Nancy was, you know, sort of conscience of Florida housing a lot of times, and someone that made sure that we were, that we were doing that in a thoughtful and principled way. The thing that she that she started on when she first came was making sure we were making data you know data driven decisions and that we had data at, at you know that we could access easily which we couldn't at that point um, uh, even though Florida Housing was trying to do that um, and Nancy really helped us up our game helped Florida Housing up its game in that regard. There's so many things that Nancy's responsible for um, moving us towards a a, a need. Um, assessment versus a demand assessment. Um, she was uh, helped us create the extremely low income loans, the LINK initiative, a lot of the supportive housing services and special needs stuff that has now just sort of been institutionalized at Florida Housing were initiatives that Nance worked on. Uh, preservation, universal design, rebuilding, I mean the list goes on and on. She's you know had a tremendous impact. Nancy was great at, at, at solving problems, always learning, always growing, um, and kept us doing the same thing. Uh, Nancy, one of the things you taught me early on was that in its highest and best use, affordable housing can be something that serves an important need and can raise a community up, be a catalyst for making a community better, you know, a better community. You know, your tireless service at Florida Housing. To us, to the community here, to all the Floridians that have never met you but are benefiting from your work, you know, was, was, a, was a critical service. You know, and the way that you did it with your humor, your thoughtfulness, your passion, uh, your drive, you were a catalyst for us that made the community better. And I love you, I'm grateful for you, and I hope whatever comes next for you, you love as much as you loved all this. But thank you, appreciate it.
you know, Florida housing just can't do it without all of our stakeholders participating and pushing on us and driving us and sometimes just being pains. Um, but I, I just want to say a couple thank yous. Um, so Mark Kaplan, who hired me, um, is a man who probably still does this today wherever he is. Um, encouraged the team to have, um, a, 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 encouraged a culture of collegiality and creativity, which is still a Florida housing today. It probably was at Florida housing before that, but I, he was the guy who hired me, and, and I really admired that about him, <coughs> besides his big brain. Um, <clears throat> to Barb Goltz, who isn't with us anymore, the incomparable Barb Goltz. Um, to, uh, to Bill O'Dell, who, um, runs the Sugar Center for Housing Studies, uh, which has become a nationally recognized center under Bill, and who with Ann Ray have been incredibly generous partners around all the data stuff, uh, helping us out with that. Um, to the staff at Florida Housing um, and the senior management team I've gotten to work with over many years. Um, folks have gone and new ones have come, and it's, it's, it's such a supportive uh, team. And, um, to our board and all of the boards that have come before this, the volunteers who, um, have you seen those packages that they have to read? <laughs> Man. And, um, and particularly, I want to say uh, to Barney Smith, and uh, who, who was our chair and Ray Dubuque over the past couple of years, the support you provided to the staff uh, as we went through a big transition uh, and then has, have faced some other things in front of us. Um, and Ray, you doing all of that gracefully, even as your community and you were reeling from Hurricane Michael. Um, and um, to Steve Auger, who is, as many of you know, an extremely generous man, um, but who provided when he was at Florida Housing, um, who supported the creation of a, a, a more integrated um, housing framework to provide more of a range of housing types to serve more Floridians in need. Um, and, and that's, you know, Trey has been very supportive of that too, uh, which, which we really appreciate. Um, to my team, policy and special programs, particularly Bill Aldinger and Rob Deardoff, to Sheila Franey, the board liaison, our board liaison, who, who has always been the one to drive the car to meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Unfailing. We've always been treated well by her, taken care of. Um, local government folks have been more and more trying to figure out how to work with us to get their needs met in their communities and the passion that local governments have, including folks here in the Keys, um, your staffs have just been incredible to work with, um, trying to get things done uh, in the face sometimes of some opposition. and. Um, and I, and I want to say um, also to our servicers, who I've learned so much from, smart, hardworking folks, I have learned so much from you. You know, the thing is, though, in addition to local governments, if we didn't have the development community working with us, we couldn't get any of this done. We couldn't get any of this done. And uh, the first developer I ever worked with was Deborah Kaler. And um, Deborah taught me that uh, it is possible to make money doing affordable housing and wear a white hat at the same time. And many of you have done that as well and still do that. And um, this has just been an incredible, an incredible job. Extremely difficult at times, extraordinarily frustrating at times, immensely satisfying, which I guess all of those things have to work together, right, for satisfaction. Um, it's, thank you very much. Really, it's been a pleasure working with you all. Consent agenda, as was previously mentioned, we had one item pulled, special assets item E was pulled, and 
I understand, uh, Mario. I guess we can do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda first. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second. Second. All right. Now, Mario, you have a statement? Yes. I'm just going to recuse myself on legal item C. Okay. See. All right, so I have a motion and a second. We, uh, Mario's recusing himself on legal item C. If there's no further discussions on the consent agenda, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, consent agenda done. First item up is the home rental. Uh, Nancy? <coughs> Good morning. Nancy, Good morning. You don't have to identify yourself. I think the court reporter knows, but other folks that come up, if you please Got identify it. yourself. Please. Nancy <laughs> Muller. <laughs> Good morning, and um, we're here today to talk. I think we just recently talked about this, but uh, to talk a little bit more again about um, the homeless school children pilot that we've got going in Santa Rosa County. Uh, as a reminder, in 2016, the board authorized the use of $1.5 million of home funds uh, to, to, um, for a pilot to demonstrate the use of short-term rental assistance, so that's up to two years, uh, to assist homeless families with school-aged children in rural and small communities, where it's particularly hard a lot of times to pull all the resources together to uh, support these families. The objective of that pilot has been to evaluate um, the use of these funds with different communities' funds to see whether we could um, promote and create uh, or support families to regain stability and self-sufficiently and keep children on track with their educations. <clears throat> Santa Rosa County has been the, the, the one county so far in the pilot um, and with four local partners. So the school district, the Escarosa Coalition for the Homeless, Family Matters of Santa Rosa, and then the Milton Housing Authority. Uh, in December of 2017, Florida Housing executed an agreement with the Milton Housing Authority to administer up to $750,000 in home uh, funds for the pilot. The agreement is for a period of two years with a one-year renewal if both parties agree. Um, in your board item, we outlined some of the great results that we've seen so far around this family stability objective. Um, but in particular, I just want to point out that 98% of the 60 students in the study uh, were promoted to the next grade or graduated. Every senior earned their diploma. Uh, and as, as we anticipated and hoped, attendance increased significantly, and 18% of the students increased their overall grade point average. We've been pleased that we've been seeing these results uh, <clears throat> for those we have served, um, but this two-year agreement that we, we signed is getting ready to terminate in early January 2020. We may renew the agreement for one year, um, and uh, your staff would like to proceed with the renewal. So we are here today to request, um, request your authorization to um, execute a one-year renewal of the agreement with Milton Housing Authority to continue to administer the home TIBRA funds, that's tenant-based rental assistance, as originally agreed upon for the continued implementation of the pilot in Santa Rosa County through the end of December 2020. So moved. Any, second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? I just have yeah. Mario, go ahead. Um, how does how do the results um, compare against what you projected when you initially went into this program? <clears throat> we did not have uh, measurable targets related to the family self sufficiency as much as we were hoping to serve more families than we've already served. Um, the biggest problem we've had in Santa Rosa County is the lack of affordable housing or the lack of housing with landlords willing to accept the rental assistance. So uh, frankly, we didn't really know what we were going to see and we didn't set specific targets um, other than we were hoping that after a two-year period or, or less that the families would be self-sufficient. So we're not quite far enough along yet to see that piece. Well, it looks like it's going in the right direction. Yep. 
and that county has been thrilled with this project, really thrilled with it. We've, we've, it's been cool to see the excitement at the local level as they've really come together um, you know, in a partnership that wasn't there before we started working on this. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and now the second item, um, also in around this pilot, this is a request for approval to add a second county to the homeless school children pilot. Um, we, we had an objective when we created this pilot in the first place a number of years ago to include more than one county in the pilot because the idea was to see, um, as with sort of any demonstration really, to see how different communities, developers, partners work together um, so that we can figure out best practices if we're going to continue this kind of work into the future. So we really wanted to have at least two, if not more, um, uh, entity or counties participating. Um, because the Santa Rosa pilot was slow to get off the ground and it seemed to us from a staff point of view that we needed to really support that, the growth of that during the first year. We did not start to look for a second county to participate uh, until uh, over the last year. So we have found a county, that county's Hernando County. Um, we've, we've found that um, the, the officials down there um, are excited about coming together in a partnership uh, and seem to have the resources needed and actually have more uh, housing available than in Santa Rosa, so we think we'll be more quickly successful in that area and getting folks housed. So the pilot's primary partners will be Hernando County School District, the Housing Authority, Hernando County Health and Human Services, uh, and the Mid-Florida Homeless Coalition. Um, we anticipate that up to 60 families will be assisted in the first two years of implementation. That's our hope. So we're here today to request that you authorize Florida Housing to execute a two-year agreement with the Hernando County Housing Authority to administer up to $750,000 in home TIBRA funds for the implementation of the Hernando County Homeless School Children Pilot with a one-year renewal permitted if both parties agree. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, any questions? Uh, I've just got a comment, uh, living close to Santa Rosa County, and after Hurricane Michael over in Bay County, uh, I think it's, people would be shocked if they knew how many students are couch, what they call couch surfing. They're not, quote, homeless living in the tents and in woods, but they're moving from friends to friends to maybe other family members. Uh, so I see this as a, a real opportunity to help that situation. Thank you. All right, I have motion and second. If there's no further discussion, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Legal, Mr. Brown. <clears throat> Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Hugh Brown, General Counsel. Uh, the only legal item we have on the action agenda for you today is the case of Casa Amigos. LLC versus Florida Housing, case number 2019-058-BP. This was a scoring protest arising from RFA 2019-108, sale financing for farm worker and commercial fishing worker housing. Casa Amigos was the sole applicant for this RFA. During scoring, this application was deemed ineligible for an incorrect development type selection, um, which then led to Casa Amigos filing this protest. During the settlement negotiations and upon further review, when we looked at the application as a whole, uh, saw that Casa Amigos had in fact selected the correct development type of garden in another section of the application. Um, after some negotiations, we then agreed that they should be eligible for funding. To that end, we ask that you adopt the consent agreement provided in your board package and issue a final order accordingly. Thank you. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, I have a yes, Mario. Um, okay, so what, what's our typical stance on inadvertent mistakes on, on the challenge applications? 
we go through the analysis of whether or not it is an inadvertence. Well, of course, it's an inadvertent mistake. Nobody puts a bad application on the purpose, I hope. Um, whether or not it counts as a minor irregularity or not. Uh, now, I don't think we went through that analysis here because I don't think it was necessary. Um, when we saw the other part of the application where they had selected it, it was pretty clear, and especially after discussing it with them, that that was their intent. In fact, um, the development type they selected incorrectly in another part of the application wasn't even allowed in the, um, for what, for new construction. Mm -hmm. And so um, we decided that they had, you know, substantially complied with the requirement, even if they had inadvertently selected it in a different place in the app. So this doesn't set any precedent? Consent agreements don't set much in the way of legal precedent. Um, it does set a precedent, but it's a precedent we've already are already following where, depending on the circumstances, we can look to other parts of the application if we get an inconsistency or idiosyncrasy. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Any other questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, thank you. sir. All right. Uh, Mocha family. Good morning, everyone. Marissa Button, Director of Multifamily Programs. Um, thrilled to be presenting this agenda item. This is item A, request for applications for RFA 2019-101 Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery in Monroe County. We call this CDBGDR. And as you recall, we are the subrecipient for these funds from the Department of Economic Opportunity. On July 2nd, Florida Housing issued RFA 2019-101, offering $25 million of CDBGDR program funding for the construction of workforce housing in Monroe County, and that's development funding, and then an additional $10 million in CDBGDR funding for acquiring land for those developments. We call that the Land Acquisition Program funding. The deadline for applications was August 6, 2019. We received four applications in response to the RFA. Review committee members were assigned and each member independently reviewed and scored their assigned portions of the applications. And at the September 4th, 2019 review committee meeting, the committee members presented their scores and carried out the funding selection process as required in the RFA. And in your materials, the 2019-101 all applications chart lists those applications. They're listed in assigned application number order. There were no ineligible applications scored in this RFA. And the review committee considered a motion to approve those scoring results and recommendations that you have in Exhibit A, and a motion to recommend to the board to you that you approve the scoring results and the recommendations for funding for the four applications set out on Exhibit A. And those motions passed unanimously. And so the RFA outlines that a completion of um, any litigation associated with this um, and approval by the board of any recommended orders that may come out of this RFA, Florida Housing will offer all applicants within the funding range an invitation to enter credit underwriting. And so we are recommending to you today that you approve the committee's recommendations um, to adopt the scoring results for the four applications set out on Exhibit A and those four applications be um, selected for funding in Exhibit A. And as a reminder, in that analysis, you're considering what's in the applications that have been set forth and the review committee has reviewed. Um, there is an unallocated balance of $1,076,011 in land acquisition program funding remaining after the, um, the four applications selected for funding and $2,123,983 in that development funding remaining. And so the RFA sets forth that any remaining funding will be distributed as approved by the board. So what we're further asking you is that um, at, as you approve the funding selection that, um, that our recommendation is to you that you approve staff to go back and develop an additional RFA to keep these hurricane recovery resources in Monroe County and try to get that funding out in conjunction with our partner um, DEO because they set forth the action plan for the use of these resources. And as always, if no notice of protest or formal written protest is filed in accordance with Florida statute, we will proceed to issue an invitation to enter credit underwriting for those applications. And um, with that, I ask for your approval okay. of the recommendation. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, a motion to approve uh, 3A, B, C, and D. All right. Second. A motion and a second. All right. Discussion among the board. Are there are questions for that for Marissa. All right, seeing no discussion, 
no questions. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank item B. And item B, this is a brief hurricane recovery update um, regarding our Hurricane Michael resources. Uh, as you all know, earlier this summer, you approved the funding recommendations for the home uh, RFA. And um, we are into credit underwriting for all of those applications, and they are working um, um, quickly to get the developments uh, moving forward for those, for those resources. Um, additionally, we have the RRLP, the Rental Recovery Loan Program for Hurricane Michael that was appropriated in the most recent legislative session, $50 million. We have our um, due date coming up in October for the receipt of applications for that RFA, and we'll be moving forward to coming to the December board meeting, ideally with those recommendations for funding for that RFA. So we're moving forward on the uh, rental end in both of those resources. And then on the, the um, other HHRP program, that SHIP-like program that we received appropriation for as well, out of the 13 local governments Hurricane Michael um, impacted, we have executed um, six uh, local government agreements and are in the process of getting the remainder of those executed. But um, of note, Bay County and Panama City local governments have executed their agreements, and we know that's where the significant amount of damage is. So we're continuing to move forward in administering the, the funding for the Hurricane Michael recovery, and that's so all I have. Did you say no Bay County or? They Panama? have, yes. They yes, have sir. done it. Yes, okay. thumbs up. Thank they you. have. They're on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and, and hopefully the development and the credit underwriters and all that are moving ahead. Everyone uh, is moving ahead with urgency. Please yes. let me know if they run into issues. Indeed we will, Chair. <laughs> and Mr. Chairman, I have a quick update for you in regards to the $5 million that Florida Housing has offered for down payment assistance. Um, David Westcott, who fell ill and did not make the trip here, has advised us that it looks like the $5 million will be completely reserved today. Which is uh, which is great news, and what that essentially means is that we have uh, we have reserved in 50, usually fifteen thousand dollar increments down payment assistance for people purchasing uh, homes in the Hurricane Michael affected area, um, and just for a little bit of uh, of of where we're where we where we how we've done this. Um, I know in two thousand and eighteen, I believe Florida Housing was involved in. Um, down payment assistance to the tune of about, I believe, 35 loans. So when this is all said and done after today, we will have, in four months, um, been involved in 350 loans. So we've really, um, we've really done some work over there in your area and looking forward to uh, getting people into new homes and uh, recovering from Hurricane Michael. So. Thank you. It's our area. <laughs> it's not my area. It's our area. Our area. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for it. Uh, the, the need is great as it is down here in the Keys uh, after the storms they went through down here. And uh, uh, just, uh, again, thank you for, for everything that and the development community that's working up there. All right. Um, strategic planning. Nancy, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So today, we sort of officially kick off or begin the strategic planning process, which we've gone through every so often, every three to five years, um, over many years now. So not only are we required to do a strategic plan by statute, um, but of course, um, for those of you in organizations and businesses, it just makes good business sense uh, to do this because it helps crystallize our focus uh, in terms of where we're trying to go in the next three to five years. It helps your staff um, be focused and, you know, is a, is a tool that your executive director, Trey, can use, uh, you know, as he's working with both you, the board, and, and us and stakeholders. <clears throat> I'm going to, and the other thing I want to say is that the process is one where, you know, it's your involvement, the staff's involvement, and then stakeholders. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the process that the staff's proposing to you. Then, you know, y'all can talk about it and make sure it meets your needs. Um, and uh, so I'll talk through the timeline a little bit. Um, the board write up that we gave to you uh, lays out a proposed. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, it felt like it went away there. <laughs> it did not. Um, lays out a, a proposed timeline um, and process to get you 
to adoption of a plan uh, early in 2020. So we're laying the groundwork at this meeting. Um, the idea is that by the October meeting, you will have um, public comments that um, we've already invited folks to submit to us <laughs> on the strategic direction of the corporation. Um, we'll also have uh, a public comment period at the, at the October meeting and an opportunity for, for you, the board members, after you have reviewed the public comment and hear from folks to be able to discuss among yourselves. Um, then if we keep moving at a clip, um, it may be as soon as, we're proposing as soon as the December meeting to have a proposed plan for you, um, and that plan would be a, a made available to uh, the public as well, um, so that you, you would basically, between the October and the De uh, December meeting, the staff will be working furiously to create that plan, and so by the December meeting, it will be made available for your review and the public's review, uh, with the idea that the first meeting in 2020 um, would be when you adopt the plan. Unless you decide you need more time, and that's up to you. Um, we, we also, um, by law, have then, um, after the plan is adopted, we have uh, performance measures that are part of our affordable housing services contract with the Department of Economic Opportunity um, that link to that plan and that we need to then consider updating, and we would bring those to you as well. Uh, <clears throat> so we, we have a set of performance measures that are in place now. Uh, some of those may still be good. We may want to tweak others based on where, where, where you go with the strategic plan. So that's the, the general timeline. Um, we've sent out um, this week a, an invitation from the chairman to um, all of the stakeholders who get our listserv emails uh, to ask for them to be thinking about and give us comments. Um, and uh, on your desk, you should have a copy of a document I forwarded to you earlier in the week, um, which is a background trends and conditions statement. You know, we, what we did was we went through a process to ask staff to look at emerging issues that are coming up, you know, what, what the economic, real estate, financial environment looks like, what we think it's going to look like over the next several years. Um, so you've got information on that. You've got the old strategic plan, or the current strategic plan, but it is old, it's aging. Um, for any reference you might want, want to have, um, you've got uh, in your board package, you have the performance measures, which I don't think we need to look at so much right now. Uh, and then you've got some more detailed information about our programs and the policies that go into um, implementing those programs. All of this information is also out on our website. Um, we have a strategic planning page, and there's a link on the home page to that, so folks who are interested, uh, you know, in the in the in, out in the public can can follow along and hopefully participate. Um, I think that's it um, in terms of an overview. So, okay, thank you, Nancy. Uh, yeah, at my request and DEO's, I guess, request, uh, we identified it was time to. Uh, update the strategic plan. Uh, it's been five years basically and uh, like I said this is kind of the kickoff for it. I, I don't want to get into discussions about you know page 25 item 3 and all that stuff at this point uh, but please take time between now and uh, you know sometime before the next meeting get any questions you might have suggestions you might have to the uh, staff and the email you received, there was a contact uh, name, I believe, in a, an email, or at least a link to that person. Uh, but just take time to look at it. I'd encourage the stakeholders out there to look it over, and if you've got some issues or some suggestions, please get them to us. Uh, you know, we're not, some people think we're moving too fast to try to get it done by January, but quite frankly, uh, I don't, so I think we ought to start. <laughs> and start looking at it because uh, you can drag anything on too long yep. yes uh, Ron yes uh, mr. chairman um, Nancy uh, we will be receiving any uh, any ideas from uh, stakeholders you'll be sending or yes. they'll be sending those to us to, re yes. to look at our intent is to compile the ones the written ones that we receive and we can receive them by mail by email you know whatever makes sense uh, and then package those for you, and then of course we'll 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 have a special opportunity at the October meeting for folks who want to verbally interact with you all and 
provide right. their ideas. Yes. Okay. So thank we'll you. provide those to you before the next meeting. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? No, just Mr. Chairman, I'm looking forward to working with uh, the stakeholders and the board and, um, and, and, and others and crafting the strategic plan. Um, looking forward to the process. And this is where I know we will miss Nancy, but <laughs> but I know that um, Bill Aldinger is the person who will be taking over um, the, gather, uh, the gathering of the information for all of us. So thank you to Bill and thank you, Nancy, for getting the ball rolling here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to have presentations now. Uh, City of Key West. Jim, are you here? There you go. Sure. <laughs> I like Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning. I'm Jim Scholl. I'm the uh, outgoing city manager for the city of Key West. Over the past 12 years, I've been the city manager for 10 years. On October 1st, I'm done. So, Nancy, I know how you feel, and you've been a great partner all along. <laughs> you know, I can't thank you enough. Uh, but down here in the Keys, we've got this continuously evolving culture and, and our economy based shifts. And the one thing we've needed ever since I got here in 2003 is workforce housing. I mean, that's our common denominator up and down the Keys. And for those of us who are literally and figuratively at the end of the road, it is extremely important. And on our little two by four mile island, we don't have a lot of developable land. And we're working very hard to preserve workforce housing and then contribute to any projects on land we have available uh, to develop, which is one of the projects that y'all just voted to fund us, so thank you for that. And, and then work with the county as well uh, to continue to support additional workforce housing. Because we'll never be able to build our way out of it, but we're trying to reduce the impact of the dwindling stock of what had traditionally been long-term workforce rental units in the Florida Keys. So uh, that's the challenge. And, and uh, with the the economic pressures from uh, short-term rentals, you know, in, in Key West proper, for example, about 60% of the housing stock on the island is not primary residences. They're vacation homes. We've marketed Key West as the world's greatest destination tropical island in the United States for visitors to come down in the hotels, but also for those that, that want to have a, a permanent vacation home. And for years, uh, those sat empty except for when the owners were there or if the owner's family was there. And now there's this incentive with Airbnb and VRBO and Home Away and all that to make some money off of these. <coughs> a lot of them have been sold with that in mind. Key West, we have transient licenses that you have to have to be able to rent short term. But uh, uh, that's not always uh, understood. And uh, but, but, but to not have those units available for any long term rentals uh, and uh, be taken away from workforce rentals is very difficult because, as I said, we've marketed it very well. The uh, tourists are coming, and you have to have a workforce to support all of that. And then those families that bring that workforce down, they need teachers. They need doctors and nurses and dental hygienists and first responders and all those folks that need houses that they can afford or apartments that they can afford uh, in those areas. So. Uh, and right now, at the state level and the county level, with Christine and her staff and everybody, and the local levels, the different municipalities, we all have very common uh, things that we need to solve, but we also have unique things that we need to solve. But, but at each layer now, uh, we're working better than we ever have. Uh, and that started even before Hurricane Irma, uh, with DEO supporting the, the county and the mis the mis uh, municipalities, I can say, if you're down here. And Nancy's been a partner all along in this, and certainly in the post Irma environment with the CDBG money uh, that came available, working with, with Sissy Proctor and Julie Dennis up there at DEO before, and, and now the team that's there, but, but Nancy, and putting that whole program together for us to be able to apply for those funds and, and uh, make that work has been phenomenal. Um, some of the other workforce housing things, though, Key West has been involved with. I know many of you went down all the way to the Quarry Project yesterday, if you saw that one. Well, that was a great partnership between the city and the county and, of course, the developers down there because we actually transferred over 100 building permit units out of the city and into the county 
to allow that project to move forward. So, uh, you know, we had to do a 380 agreement. We had to go through the process. And of course, the area of critical concern means Tallahassee has to, to uh, sign off on all those things. But it all went very well to, to make that project happen. And of course, that's valuable to us in Key West, even though it's not in the city limits, everything from Big Pine on down to Key West is our suburb, so to speak, and, and a lot of our workforce uh, lives up to Key West. So, so those are important partnerships and, and things that we benefit from in, in sharing the resources to make those things happen. Another thing that the city did uh, in the last couple of years was buy deed restrictions on a very large uh, workforce housing complex in the middle of Key West called uh, uh, Perry Court. And, and uh, uh, at the time, uh, when developers first bought that uh, as excess military property, uh, they maintained it all as workforce housing, and then they were going to flip it, so the new owners were going to make it all condos, vacation condos. So we were able to strike a deal, and we spent a little over $12 million to permanently deed restrict those as workforce housing uh, units in the city of Key West. And of course, now we're talking about the Garden View Apartments. Uh, that's the name that Alvy came up with, who's sitting here, our architect. But, uh, out there on College Road, so the 103 new workforce housing units that uh, we will be 100% done with the construction drawings here uh, uh, by October 1st. And our partner, the Key West Housing Authority, Manuel Castillo here is, is gonna become the developer and, and we'll be ready to go. So, so that's been our number one priority uh, for the last six, eight months. And the staff's probably glad that I'm leaving because I've been meeting them nonstop to uh, make sure that, that we had every I dotted in every T cross to be ready, to be ready not only to to uh, compete for the funding, uh, but also uh, move forward quickly. So, subject to your questions, and thanks to everybody who was in this process. So. Okay. Any any questions? Uh, thank you. It, it was a great tour. You've got a beautiful chain of islands down here from. Uh, the land of the pine trees. There used to be pine trees. Well, and, and we don't take that for granted here. Oh, All of the people beautiful. in the government down here know how important it is, and, and it is a national, if not a world treasure. So. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Jim. All right. Uh, Seth Lawless, see you. I'm just going to take a second to get his presentation. I have a PowerPoint. You can use this or the pad. It's up to you. Good morning, everybody. Is this Oops, is it on? Is your, is your mic turned on? Switch on the top. Was it on screen? Good morning. Oh, there you there go. we go. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And on behalf of our mayor and vice mayor who are in the audience, uh, welcome, a belated welcome to Ala Mirada Village of Islands. I trust they're treating you very well here. Um, Ala Murata has, has made some progress, and thanks to Jim Scholl for kind of setting the stage of the environment down here. Um, without a housing department or any employees uh, to directly work on, on uh, affordable housing is their primary responsibilities. We don't have any such position, so uh, the, the village manager, the village attorney, the planning director and the council. That's who works on our affordable housing. We're small, but we're nimble. And I just want to spend a few minutes telling you, showing you what the village has been able to accomplish over 20, 22 years. And I'll start with just a few of the policy things and then show you a few of our projects. So the uh, affordable housing uh, committee was one of the first steps the village took creating it in 2004. And they would do the things that you would expect. They researched incentives and strategies and ways to get moving on developing or designating some deed restricted affordable housing. Um, the committee went to work uh, right away and um, got involved in Woods Corner, which is a 16 unit uh, rental property here. The Middle Keys um, Land Trust uh, helped us develop that and they still currently manage it. Uh, the Affordable Committee then uh, in 2006 created, um, did a study basically that led to some pretty significant policy developments. 
the housing nexus study did a couple things. It created our affordable housing fund and it created the um, impact fee, basically. Uh, we call it an inclusionary fee, but it's an impact fee that commercial developments pay when they, when they get permitted based on their number of employees. We put that money in the fund and use it to buy property or provide other incentives for the development of affordable housing. Um, that's the, the fee in lieu of the um, inclusionary fund. So again, we've purchased vo vacant land. We've worked with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we've actually paid impact fees, the recreation and transportation fees for other projects. Um, we hit, did a wastewater connection assistance program for low-income residents when the village had to get sewered. You know, we are a, an area of critical state concern. And it was mandated that we install sewer, advanced wastewater treatment, and so we use some of these funds to help low-income people uh, connect their homes. And then we also have a down payment assistance program for up to $10,000. Uh, um, established in 2017, those are some of the requirements. We've made nine of those so far. And, uh, and it's been very successful. Uh, last year we did, a, or earlier this year, we modified our village code to reduce those impact fees. We don't charge anything for the, um, the building permits. Um, but there's really four scenarios, whether we're working for a nonprofit or a for-profit and whether or not we gave them property or not. And based on which quadrant of that matrix they fall into, they can be eligible for up to 80% reduction in impact fees. So this, uh, this is a little more about Woods Corner, completed in 2008. <clears throat> it's in a nice neighborhood, excuse me. Um, privately owned homes. Wetnet Villas, I think you uh, toured this yesterday. That is a, a successful partnership we had with Gorman. Um, Habitat, I think we've got three projects underway in Habitat. You've passed by uh, a 16 unit apartment complex under construction uh, just north of here by Theater of the Sea. And uh, that is unique because Habitat was able to modify their their process, their, their model for how they develop to include eight rental units. Their model is strictly based on home ownership. They were able to work out um, eight, eight individually owned as well as eight rental properties on this Winley Key project. It's a little more about Winley Point. Uh, we went in on the land with Monroe County, uh, provided the property from a, bought it a boat storage business and uh, it's currently under development. And that's just a quick site plan, as you've seen. Um, that's a, a project, uh, projected project right off the overseas highway, another habitat project that's uh, four units, a duplex and two single-family homes. Uh, looks like that'll get done or underway next year. This is a completely private development. We provided no incentives, no land, and it's small homes. Uh, I called it Santee Village. I don't know if that's its name or not. Uh, Chris Santee is the developer. And it's five small homes or 600 or 650 square feet, one bedroom with a loft on top. And he sold all five of those very, very quickly, $215,000, which is pretty remarkable. Um, these are some things we've got in the queue, uh, we use money from the Affordable Housing Trust Fund to purchase those four lots outlined in yellow there, and we have a preliminary site plan for um, an eight-unit apartments of one and two bedroom projects. This is a little bit down the road from there. There we go. Um, three lots that we purchased, same thing. All that trash has been cleaned up and, and moved out of there. And uh, that is ready to go for some affordable housing development. Uh, we're down to 28 allocations left. Again, we are an area of uh, critical state concern, so we don't have unlimited building rights. Um, we have, right now, only 28 more allocations to give out over the next three years. We do have 
um, hope that we can get some additional allocations from DEO. We'll see how that works its way through the process. We don't know, though, yet. And that's it. Okay, thank you. That's, that's great. And yeah, we did get to see uh, WetNet. Yeah. That's very, very nice. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Or, no? All right. Thank you again. Christine? Good morning. My name is Christine Hurley. I'm an assistant county administrator for the county. Um, I want to say thank you a million times over for your agency and everything they've done to help us, especially after Hurricane Irma. There were 4,000 homes either destroyed or majorly damaged throughout our county, and basically your agency stepped up um, with the money funneled from the Department of Economic Opportunity to provide us all a, um, a great chance to start the rebuilding. I'm gonna pass out, if I can, um, just kind of a one-page status of where we are and all the unique projects and programs we've developed since then. Um, Jim and yeah. Seth, of course, indicated, thank you, that uh, and outlined all the challenges that we have. And so I'm not gonna go into that, but what I am gonna say is, from a state perspective, one of the major issues for us after the storm was the damage to the mobile homes and coming up with some ideas um, for what kind of product can be built as a replacement to mobile homes in our state. And I think your agency could be a leader in that arena. I loved that Seth showed you all the little tiny homes that they've built, and our county is underway with three separate vendors on three pieces of property we, we already owned to have some code compliant tiny homes constructed. So that is on the page I just passed out. And then of course, the reason we're here is to highlight the projects that were submitted and this morning awarded. So I want to thank you guys very much. Um, lastly, and I kind of wanted to stand up when Nancy was, was up there and you all were giving her a tribute, but she helped all of us, always through the years before Irma, but very much so afterward, because as you might realize local governments don't normally apply through your agency for funding. And so the workshops that you all held, the educational experience we received is second to none. It's hard to navigate state programs and I just want to give you all the kudos in the world for um, doing it in a way that we could understand and helping us instead of publishing and then we're on our own. And so, we wanted to give Nancy an honorary conch certificate. Oh. <laughs> and let me tell you something, these are hard to come by. <laughs> um, the conchs that are from here are very, very embedded. And these are given out by our mayor um, at the time, whomever it is, and I'm not going to read it all, but basically it's given to people who, who show a very um, great spirit for, for keeping the keys the way they are. And um, I do laugh when I read it, though, because <laughs> it's so old that it even includes eating delicacies like green turtle steak. <laughs> so I always feel bad when I give one out. Like I, I, I'm doing something illegal in a way, but um, just take it for that. But Nancy, seriously, um, you have touched all of us as a public servant, and it's very important um, to highlight how wonderful you've been for us. So thank you.
Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes. um, I know it's, it's great to see um, our friends uh, from Monroe County again. Um, for those of you who weren't on the board or didn't know, uh, Jackie Peters, Nancy Muller, and I, and Julie Dennis, the former board member from DEO, uh, came down to Monroe County. I believe it was, um, it was plus 54 days from Hurricane Irma. Um, and we actually met with every local government um, on one level or another, all the way down to Key West. And I've enjoyed working with everyone, and it's really kind of been a great circle um, to go all the way down to Key West yesterday and see what tremendous uh, strides you all have made. Um, I commented um, that I thought, having my family lived through Hurricane Andrew, that the Keys had done an extraordinary job at day 54, but now here we are uh, about two years later, um, almost to the day, um, when, when Hurricane Irma came through, and you all have done uh, just tremendous work, and uh, it's just so, it's so wonderful to see, and it's so fortuitous that we are here, um, and that the board was able to make those awards today, and we just look forward to continued work and success, and thank you again, Nancy, for making that trip with us, and it wouldn't have been a success without you, so thank you again. Just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Uh, before we get into the public comment, let me go ahead again and thank uh, Gorman and Company, Wendover Housing Partners, and Vescor for the excellent tour yesterday, and I think those are some units that we should all be proud of, so thank you for, for that. Okay, we're going to open it up to public comment. Uh, I would ask you to... Uh, Limit the comment to if it's already been said, you can say ditto or whatever, but uh, exactly. we're not gonna <laughs> turn anybody away. We just wanna make sure we, we stick to the topic. Thank you, yes sir. And you have to say, state your name and, and your uh, organization, or represent, who you represent. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. My name is Sean Wilson, I'm with Blue Sky Communities. Um, my Blue Sky Communities is a pretty young company. We've only been around for about seven years, and uh, in the in the early days of, of Blue Sky, we were honored to receive a visit from uh, two Florida housing staff members at uh, one of our properties. It was me and my partner, Jim Chadwick, and um, Jim has been a, a property manager of affordable housing since 1971, and um, we had a really great visit, and these staff members asked some amazing questions you could tell they were pure of heart, only questions about the property and why is this bedroom like that and what does, what does a family want or what does an elderly person want and why does this make sense? And you could really tell that uh, these, these two staff members were interested in what is best for the citizens of Florida. And of course, I'm talking about uh, Kevin Tatro, but more importantly, uh, Nancy Muller, who, who emitted most of those questions. So, uh, Kevin had a few, so um, Nancy, we were really honored that day uh, to be able to show you that property, and, and I, you may have seen a couple of our other properties since then, and I know you've seen a lot, and um, again, we always knew and know that you were pure of heart. Your uh, goal was, uh, was to help the state uh, do uh, right by the low-income citizens of the state of Florida, and so uh, on behalf of myself and everybody at Blue Sky Communities, and I will also speak for the Coalition of Affordable Housing Providers, where I'm the current chairman, uh, the entire development community really, really appreciates all your input, and uh, we hope that we have made you proud in implementing the policies that, that, that you help uh, set forth. So thank you very much, Nancy, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sean. Okay, anyone? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Seth Lawless, Alamorada Village of Islands. Uh, just very quickly, I'm here to advocate, if possible, you considering opening back up the CBBGDER if there's any remaining funds. That's it. Thank you. I think that's what the plan is, correct? Yes, that is the plan, sir. Okay, anyone else? George Nugent, Monroe County, former uh, five-term county commissioner, recently retired from the commission in November. Uh, I'm also president of the Chamber of Commerce years ago in the city of Marathon. And I can't iterate, reiterate enough about our need for affordable workforce housing. 
Uh, we have been, as Ms. Hurley said, uh, we've lost 4,000 homes. Uh, as mayor during and after Hurricane Irma, uh, the loss was tragic, especially on the ocean side and in the Lower Keys, but all of our communities were affected by this disastrous storm. And uh, I was here today to speak on behalf, and I saw that y'all did that early on, keeping that money in Monroe County. That is extremely uh, needed uh, to forward. I've worked since my retirement with several uh, developers that are working on workforce housing. And uh, I appreciate, I wanna thank you, I wanna thank Nancy for the work that she's done. And I wanna thank you guys for doing what you do as public servants. Thank you very much. And thank you for being here. Thank you for coming and uh, don't stay away so long and come back and see us again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, anyone else? All right, seeing none, I'm going to gavel this meeting to, uh, to end, but to adjourn, but we have two more items so okay. we'll gavel this one done and now we're going to open up the Florida Finance Corporation 2 board meeting. She needs Great. to take, we're going to take roll as well. Okay, so we'll take the roll again, oh, Sheila. Oh, sure. <laughs> I gotta find my papers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Just to remind the board, these items are in the back of your packet that uh, we received. Ray Dubuque. Here. Ron Lieberman. Here. Mario Pichella. Here. Preston Lifrey. Here. Ken Lawson. Natasha Bastian. Rainier Diaz de la Portilla. Here. Latasha Green Cobb. Present. Barney Smith. Okay, thank you. All right, you. Good morning again. Um, before you is a resolution delegating authority to the executive director and certain management staff to execute routine financial documents on behalf of FHFC2 Incorporated. Um, this authority has previously and consistently been delegated to uh, chief financial officer, general counsel, director of multifamily, and other uh, staff, as you may see in your packet. Um, these people have been designated as assistant secretaries authorized to execute documentation on behalf. Yeah. Okay. Can someone grab the Just door? pull it closer, Hugh. Your voice doesn't carry very well to the microphone. I, I have some family members that might disagree with that. But. Yeah, but they're, they're not here. Okay. The rest of us can't right. hear you. <laughs> right. As I was saying, um, certain senior management staff has in the past been designated as assistant secretaries authorized to execute documentation on behalf of FHFC2. Staff recommendation is that the board adopt this resolution. Okay, we have a uh, recommendation from staff. Do I have a motion? Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So we'll call this one adjourned. <laughs> Now, we have one more, uh, FHFC3 Incorporated, and you, uh, well, take the roll, please. <laughs> Ray Dubuque. Here. Ron Lieberman. Here. Mario Ficella. Here. Preston Lifrey. Here. Ken Lawson. Natasha Bastian. Rainier Diaz de la Portilla. Still here. <laughs> Latasha Green Cobb. Present. Barney Smith. Okay, thank you. All right, now you. Once again, this is an identical resolution, but for FHFC3, um, delegating authority for certain senior management staff to delegate routine, um, sorry, execute routine financial documents. And we recommend that you adopt the resolution. So moved. Thank you. I have a motion second. Any questions, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> or you can drive back over there. Oh, yeah, I gotta drive back. <laughs> I haven't. I'm so close away.